Guys, what's going on? And I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope everything's good wherever you are. Guys, what is going on? What is going on, my people? What is going on? As you guys know, I uh, hope you guys are staying safe. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the video, and let's get into it. This is a, this is a funny video. Um, Amir King Khan. Oh man, I'm going to miss when Amir Khan finally hangs up his gloves. Um, as you guys know, I got into the sport because of him. I, I started watching his, you know, actually from the Olympics, started watching him. And I didn't really miss a fight since I watched all of his fights. Uh, a lot of his fights were on ITV initially and um, all over the place. I can't even remember. It was so long ago. Uh, he, You know, he, his Olympic Games was 2004. I was at school at that point. Uh, when did I... So, yeah, I would have just been, when he went to the Olympic Games, I must have been, like, year nine, I think. Uh, yeah, year nine, because it was 2004, right? And I started school in 2002. So, yeah, would have been two years into my, so it would have been year eight or year nine, something like that. So, really, Amir Khan's been a part of my whole life. Like, I remember being at college when... Amir Khan fought Lamont Peterson and there were being an outrage about that fight and and how people thought Amir got robbed and it, I, re I remember like I even remember the stages of his career and where I was at and where what I was doing at the time I was actually at college at the time when Amir Khan fought Lamont Peterson which I believe was in 2011 uh, so I was actually at college at that point um yeah, so I've been following Amir Khan's career from the get-go, like from the very, from the amateur days, you know what I mean? Like, when I mean amateur days, I mean from the Olympic Games. Obviously, I wasn't following his career prior to that. Um, but yeah, from the, from the you know, Olympic Games, I've been following his career, his first pro fight, watched the Kindleland, you know, the first fight, whether that was an amateur fight or professional fight. I think it was an uh, amateur fight, uh, which he won, then he turned pro uh, under Frank Warren. Um but yeah, Amir Khan has said some funny things and I think, you know, his fight, obviously we know that, you know, he's finally going to fight Kell Brook, which is the big grudge fight that everybody's been waiting for. And um, Amir Khan says, I'm going to leave it to God what round uh, I knock out Kell Brook. I've been watching a bit of sparring footage uh, of Amir Khan. Uh, some people see that, you know, Amir slowed down. Some people think, you know, he's still, he still got, you know, his skills. Uh, just not as fast as he used to be. I personally think that obviously he's still a good fighter. I still think he's going to be a problem for someone like Kell Brook, who's also passed his best. But Kell Brook's also going to be a problem for him uh, at this particular point. At any point, uh, Kell Brook would have been a problem. Uh, it wouldn't have been an easy fight. Um, you know, I know Amir feels otherwise. And Amir Khan has said that, you know, he feels that um, he, you know, he, he was levels above Kell Brook. Um, I don't agree. I don't. I wouldn't. I don't agree with that. I don't think he was levels above Kell Brook. Uh, do I think he would have beat him? Some people think that Kell Brook would have won the fight in the prime. A lot of people actually think that. Um, I actually think a lot of opinions changed after Amir Khan fought Canelo, and I think a lot of people can't look past that uh, because if you look at Amir Khan's career, um, yeah, he got knocked out by Prescott early on. Uh, Danny Garcia stopped him as well, but really early on in his career. Not many guys used to put him away, you know, you know, Canelo, you can't really count that. Canelo was a big guy, you know, Canelo would put most guys away at that kind of weight, you know, but having that kind of weight and size advantage. Uh, so I don't really look at that fight, but I look at how sturdy he was when he was down at light welterweight, welterweight. And unfortunately, he didn't really fight any of the top welterweight, so we don't know. Um, I do think he beat Lamont Peterson. I think the I think the only legitimate guy that beat him at 140 was was Danny Garcia. We legitimately beat him. I think Le Danny Garcia was a tremendous fighter, and um, yeah, I think I I personally I personally think that you know I think for example like I know Burning Desire asked me questions like who do I think who do do I think that um, and how do I think Amir would have got on against Porter Kell Brook. Spence and Keith Thurman. Uh, I would have favoured Thurman and Spence to beat him. I think the Porter. I I, I would have favoured Khan to beat Porter, uh, especially the one that Kell Brook fought. Uh, Kel, Porter was drawing to guys like Julio Diaz back then, you know, and um, and also Maidana was a better fighter than Porter for me. He was basically Porter with more punching power. I think Maidana would have beaten Porter if they had ever fought. I think Maidana was a monster. Port, Porter couldn't hurt Maidana, you know. 
Um, and basically, Maidana had more punching power. So what did really Porter have more than Maidana? Nothing, really, when you think about it. Um, Maidana had a lot more. Had a lot. Had yeah, For me, he had a lot more. Um, and a lot of people will say, well, oh, well, Porter beat Devin Alexander. Maidana, firstly, when he fought um, Devin Alexander, Devin Alexander was a monster back then. Your Porter didn't fight the best version of Alexander. Hence why when Amir fought uh, Alexander, look at what Amir did to him. Porter had a close fight with Alexander. Amir fought in the next fight and Colt totally dominated him. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Amir was at a different level to Porter um, at that point. You know, maybe Porter later on in his career, which I don't believe Kel Brook fought the best version of Sean Porter. I think Sean Porter developed later on. Still, though, I, I still doubt because Porter didn't have punching power. Porter was going distances with journeymen. You know, uh, like I'm talking Phil LaGreco, I believe, went the distance with him. You know, uh, Julio Diaz went the distance. Julio Diaz went the distance with Amir Khan, but Amir Khan wasn't a big welterweight. You know, Porter was a big welterweight and he didn't have any effect. You know, he didn't even have an effect on Phil LaGreco. Amir Khan wiped out in, in 50 seconds. This is what I'm trying to say. Porter didn't have much punching power. He wasn't a big puncher. He wasn't a Maidana level puncher. Um, hence why whenever he fought at top level, he didn't really was able to hurt those guys even adrian broner he couldn't even hurt adrian broner you know broner put porter down i wasn't a big fan of porter i think he was a bit inflated he was a good fighter in terms of he'd give everyone a fight but i think amir khan would have outworked him i don't think he had the power to stop amir khan if mike donna didn't at that point then porter certainly doesn't the brook fight for me was um a 50 50 uh i i always viewed it as a 50 50 i think people now have uh an inflated opinion about kel brook in terms of how that fight would have gone I totally disagree with a lot of people. Um, I actually think that fight would have been very, very intriguing to watch. Um, I actually think it would have been a great watch. But certain Brook fans are a bit delusional. They think that Brook would have beaten Spence if he hadn't fought Golovkin and he would have done this, that and that. Brook was a good fighter, nothing more than that. You know, I think um, he never really fought any top level guys. And here's the thing with Brook. If you look at it, he fought guys like Golovkin. He fought guys like Errol Spence and Crawford, who are probably levels level above him. And hence why he got beat emphatically in the end. You know, Spence beat him emphatically, irrespective of what anybody says. He got beat emphatically. You know, he went down on a knee and he got he, st he got stopped. You know, uh, maybe the fight might have been different if he didn't fight Golovkin. But we never know that. The fact is, we, we got to see what we got to see. I can't I can't judge somebody on what they may have done. I can only judge you on what you have done. Uh, you know, I can't say, well, if he didn't do this, if he didn't do that. It's a bit like Prince Nassim Hamed. I feel like a lot of the Sheffield Ingle camp have a lot of excuses about, oh, well, Barrera, he was he had this, 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 that, and the other. For me, Barrera would have beaten any version of Nassim Hamed. Uh, and I was a big Nassim Hamed fan. But when I look at Nassim Hamed's career, really, when you think about it, who did he really fight on that Barrera's level? Nobody. If you look at the guys that he fought, they weren't really on... Barrera's level because Barrera is the only guy that we re like when we think about Nazim Hamad's resume who do we really remember from his resume which fighter do we think about and think whoa that guy was a killer we still remember him still talk about like for example Maidana retired in 2013 how many people still talk about Marcus Maidana and when when they see a picture of all oh, legend they they, they 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 start talking a lot of good things about Maidana oh that he was a killer because he was a great fighter. How many people of Nazim Hamed's resume do we remember and talk about? Wow. Like, for example, Jeremy McLennan, Nigel Ben. People still talk about Jeremy McLennan. Like, you know, but Nazim Hamed didn't really have that kind of resume. He didn't really have those names on his on his resume. Um, and the Kell Brook situation is the same. That Kell Brook never really fought Keith Thurman. Like, Keith Thurman, for me, was a level below Crawford, Spence, and, of course, Golovkin. Golovkin, he, Brook should have never been in the ring. But I don't even think Kel would have beaten Keith Thurman. I think Keith Thurman would have beaten Kel Brook. I think Keith Thurman would have beaten Amir Khan. Uh, I just think Keith Thurman had too much explosive power. He was too twitchy. You see, Kel Brook was a bit slow. Keith Thurman was fast. He was fast of hands. He was very powerful. And he, and he was also very athletic. Kel Brook wasn't as athletically gifted as someone like Keith Thurman. Hence why I think that would have been a horrible matchup for Amir Khan. I also think that I also think Keith Thurman would have beaten Kel Brook because I think Keith Thurman was as big as Kel Brook. And I think Keith Thurman was a bigger puncher than Kel Brook. I think Keith Thurman had a had a good well, I, I wouldn't say he had a good chin. I think he was vulnerable to the body and stuff. Um but Kel Brook's not really a, a great body puncher, is he? Um 
And I just think he would have boxed he would have boxed a points decision against Kell Brook. I think he was better on his feet than Kell Brook. So I, I would have favoured Thurman to beat Kell Brook without question. Um, so I think Spence and Thurman would have beaten Amir Khan, yes. But I definitely think that... I, I definitely think that... Um, I definitely believe that Amir Khan could have beaten Kell Brook. And I think he would have beaten Porter. Um, so that's to answer your question, Burning Desire. Um... I, in terms of this fight between Amir Khan and Kell Brook, anyone can win it. Uh, and Burning Desires, you, you've been asking me questions about would I give Kell credit? Of course I would if he wins the fight because he's past his best, just like Amir's past his best. Um, but I think one thing a lot, of, a lot of you guys seem to not take into consideration, and here's why I'd give Amir more credit for winning. Amir's a smaller guy. Kell Brook's always been bigger than Amir Khan. He's always he's a much bigger guy. So Amir deserves like Amir. The reason why he wouldn't, if he had beaten Kell Brook, he wouldn't have got as much credit as he deserves because Amir had a bigger reputation, a bigger name than Kell Brook. But when you think about it, put the names and reputation to one side, right? Kell Brook was a bigger man. We should be giving Amir Khan a lot of credit for beating someone like Kell Brook because he's a bigger man. Kell Brook should have an advantage. It's only because of the way Khan was viewed in his prime and how he was viewed so much higher than Kell Brook that people make out like Kell Brook beating Khan. No, no, no. Khan was smaller than Kell Brook. He's a smaller guy. Amir Khan's not as big as Kell Brook. Look at their, look at their, look at their bodies. Like when they go into a ring, look at the size of Kell Brook. Look at the size of Amir Khan. Amir Khan's way smaller than Kell Brook. Kell Brook's really, a, uh, he should be at 154. You know, he's that big. Amir Khan started off his career at 135. If I'm not mistaken, Kel started his career at welterweight. So he's naturally a bigger man. So if Amir Khan had beaten Kel Brook in his prime, he should have got doubly the amount of credit. But I don't think he would have got that much credit for beating Kel Brook, even in his prime. I don't think he would have got as much credit as he should have got if he had won that fight. Hence why I don't think he was taking that fight because he knew it was a risk. But he was looking for guys like Mayweather and Pacquiao, who he thought would be much he'd get much more credit for beating even though i don't think he beats either guy um but i think he would have got much more credit and it was a bigger fight for him but that's what a lot of people seem to not for a lot of people seem to forget that kel brooks a way bigger man way bigger man so I don't understand why I don't I don't understand why, you know, people make out like Kel beating Khan would be a no no, Khan beating Kel would be much a bigger thing. Because he's a smaller guy. Kel Brook's a bigger man. You know, that plays a bigger like when you're fighting, that plays a big advantage. If I'm bigger than you, that's a big disadvantage, you know. If I'm if I'm a disadvantage is a smaller guy, of course, that's why there's weight classes. Because Amir was a smaller guy, he would have had to walk, well, I wouldn't want to say a tightrope because it's not exactly Kell Brook was like a monster puncher, but he definitely had the power to hurt Amir Khan. You know, and, he, and listen, Kell Brook could win this fight and he could have won in their primes as well. But it, I, I don't like the fact that people try to make out that the fight wasn't competitive and Brook would have slaughtered. Come on, have a break. Give yourself a Kit Kat. Like, I, I, I hate when people do, and I think a lot of people do that is because they have a dislike for Amir Khan. Because Amir Khan, I feel like, David Hay's the same. Amir Khan and David Hay get a lot of hate because I think a lot of the public sometimes seem to think they played the game very well in terms of they made a lot of money, they're very successful, they had great careers. And they, I think the public at times seem to think they're like, they're conning us, you know what I mean? They're doing this, that and the other and they get treated like that. But, and then people don't actually look at how great their career was. And they overlook their achievements and accomplishments because let me tell you, both Amir Khan and David Hay, these are... These are, for me, British British greats in terms of boxing. And what I mean by that is, I don't, think they're, I don't think they're boxing legends. No, I think they're British greats. How many fighters do you know have, have beaten as many former world champions as Amir Khan from Britain? How many fighters do you know that were two-weight world champions that went from cruiserweight, cleaned up the cruiserweight, unified cruiserweight champion, went up to win a heavyweight? Yeah, David Hayes' run at heavyweight wasn't very good. And Amir Khan's run at welterweight wasn't very good. He didn't really fight the top guys. And, you know, he and his legacy is hurt by that. I think Amir Khan 
his career at 140 was definitely a Hall of Fame career. But I think he hurt himself at welterweight because he should have tested himself against some of the top guys at welterweight. But unfortunately, the fights weren't there as well. The only fight really that was there... Having said that, I think Amir Khan, I think Keith Thurman was chasing Amir Khan. Kel Brook was chasing Amir Khan. So having said that, I'll take that back. The fights were there. Um, but at the time, he was chasing Mayweather and Pacquiao. And the why it hurts his legacy, he's never got those fights. Because if he had got those fights and just say he had got a Pacquiao fight and he had beaten Pacquiao, then all of a sudden, Amir Khan's career would be seen in a different way. And that's what he did. At welterweight, Amir Khan was chasing Mayweather and Pacquiao too much rather than carving out his own legacy because i would have picked keith thurman to beat amir khan but there's not 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 it's not like a foregone conclusion i think amir khan could have beaten him i would have picked thurman as a favorite and in the brook fight i think that's a proper 50 50 for me uh, and khan could have beaten brook and that that win in itself in his in there if he had beaten brook in his prime then that in itself with what he had already done at 140 would have made him a, a guaranteed Hall of Famer, a guaranteed Hall of Famer, if he had if he had beaten Kell Brook in his prime, you know. Now there's question marks, you know. People, some people say he is a Hall of Fame. Some people say they don't think so. You see, but that's because that's when you decide to, you know, kind of start picking and choosing. You know, unless you're so good like a Mayweather, you were able to do that. And still, look, Mayweather was a he was already in the Hall of Fame, his career at 135, he was exceptional. You know, what he did after that, you know, was unbelievable. Same with Pacquiao. But very few, like, Khan wasn't at that level. He wasn't at a Mayweather-Pacquiao level for him to do that. So I think Amir, in years to come, might look back at it and think, I could have done more. I could have solidified, my, solidified myself, not just as a, a British great fighter, you know, um actually a boxing great fighter you know a, a boxing legend like if he had done if he had if like obviously this is all if he had won those fights which he may have not done which then would have hurt his legacy but the point i'm trying to make is i saw a list the other day right of the top 10 fighters from britain of the 21st century and i, I think it, i don't can't remember who was putting the list together and uh, amir khan was obviously in the top 10 you know, I think the list had uh, Joe Calzaghe, Lennox Lewis, Amir Khan, uh, Josh Taylor, um, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Prince Nassim Hamed. And all the names that I saw on there were all rec recognisable names and all had great careers. David Hay was on there, of course. Um, but sometimes, sometimes I feel like Amir Khan's overlooked a little bit. You know, I'm, I was glad to see him on that list, but sometimes I think he's overlooked because people can't get past, you know, they, they think of him as that chinny fighter. But when you look at his achievements, there's not many British fighters that had a career like him, in my opinion. Carl Froch was on there as well, that list. Uh, there's not many fighters. I think Amir Khan and Carl Froch's resume are two of the best resumes in British boxing, period. Uh, yeah, Kalzagi and Lennox, you know, but they were, they're considered probably all-time greats, greats in boxing. Uh, but the rest of British fighters, I, they, this is like British greats, you know what I mean? I won't call them boxing greats like Nazim, David, Amir, Ricky. These are, um, you know, these are oh, these are okay British great fighters. They'll be remembered in Britain. Um, but um, yeah, I I think sometimes he doesn't get the credit, you know, and even Froch for that matter. But Froch gets recognised now. Um, maybe when Amir's still fighting, he's still, you know, in the game. So maybe later on in, in years to come, people will remember him. Some people may not. Um, but I feel like he deserves a lot more credit. He, you know, he did a lot in his career. He had a great career and he did a lot. People need to, they need to, you know, recognise what he did, you know. Um, and unfortunately, Kel Brook could have been in that list. But Kel Brook, unfortunately, at world level, he didn't do enough. Uh, he beat one guy in a very scrappy, ugly fight against Porter. But, you know, when you look at the talent that Brooke had, Brooke probably should have been on that list as well. But Brooke just didn't do enough. He didn't do enough. And he, at world level, Brooke just didn't do enough. You know, his resumes got, you know, Porter's only decent win at world level. And that was a close fight. That wasn't exactly he schooled him or he knocked him out. You know, it was a very close fight. So when you think about it, that's all he's done, you know, and that's one fight. And styles make fights, different styles. How do you know Devin Alexander may have caused a different problem for Kelbrook? 
other styles may have caused a different problem. This is what I'm trying to say. Styles make fights at world level. And Kell Brook only fought one style, really. You know, he fought three pressure fighters in his prime. Kel, um, Porter, Golovkin and Spence. And he lost two of them and he won a close decision against one of them. And that Porter really, let's be honest, Porter wasn't exactly on Spence and Golovkin's level. I know it's Golovkin's much bigger, but he's not really on that kind of level. Like he was a level below. So he was kind of like Kell Brook's level fighter, you know. Um, and... You know, he had a he still became world champion. He had a good career, but I think he should have done more. Um, and when you look at some of the other names on on that list, they did a lot. You know, you look at Josh Taylor, look at Amir Khan's resume, look at you know um, what's his name, David Hayes' resume. Uh, you look at all these guys. All of those guys have got a lot of credible wins. They've got some good wins on there. Whereas if you look at Brooks, he's got one scrappy win at world level, which really for his talent, which he did have talent, is you know it's not good enough um and he just couldn't get the fights very poorly managed fighter unfortunately and that's just sometimes how it goes there's been many fighters probably in the history of the sport that unfortunately didn't get the fights were poorly managed and didn't quite show their full potential but you know Kell Brook definitely fits into that category but leave your thoughts let me know what you think in the comment section below and guys remember to please like share subscribe to my channel I'll see you guys in the next video peace